Good evening, ma'am. Good evening, Priya. You were absent yesterday, I think so. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Are you not feeling well? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. Take care, Priya. Yes, ma'am. Okay. We will start up with the first question. So the first question is a very direct question about the tropical cyclones, which are largely confined to the South China Sea, Bay of Bengal, and Gulf of Mexico. So here you have to give answers in two parts. First one is about what are the what is tropical cyclone? What are the suitable conditions for the tropical cyclones to be formed? And second part of the question is about you should be so specific uh, why the tropical cyclones are largely confined to South China Sea, Bay of Bengal, and Gulf of Mexico. So the first part of the question I have answered here because tropical cyclones topic uh, it is a very important topic in terms of uh, geophysical phenomena uh, like climatology we can say okay because cyclones all the tropical cyclones always uh, has their worst effects despite the rain, rainfall and increasing the uh, underground water table or uh, increasing the water bodies level okay rather than that they cause devastating effects uh, in the tropical zone we can say okay so here we can say uh, between 10 degree to 30 degree uh, north of the equator we can see the effect of the tropical cyclones uh, in north as well as south of the equator we can say because that zone is called the tropical uh, zone okay in both the northern and the southern hemisphere okay so first you have to give the definition for tropical cyclone for this you can get uh, answer from the ncrt book itself uh, that is we can say uh, 12th standard ncrt and as well as you can get the points from coach and leon book okay uh, which are the best uh, books for we can say geography so those two books are the uh, basics and uh, that will be useful for problems as well as mains too so here the first part of the question is answered especially for geography type geography questions we have to draw diagrams often uh, mapping that is sketching the map okay either we should uh, draw our india map or else we should draw the world map okay sometimes uh, you may be in the situation to draw the uh, specific specific continent map too okay so it is uh, it will be a good practice if you start practicing uh, drawing the world map and india map and especially each continental map uh, in uh, what we can say in one by fourth of a page okay try to draw that um, not uh, not so specific in drawing not like an artist competition and all so just if we see the map it should be look like that continent okay see here my map will be not that much of artistic but you can say this is a world map okay like this you have to draw the map because uh, for geography type of questions uh, always a map is preferred okay whenever the question has been asked so please try the uh, try or uh, do the practice of uh, drawing world map and each continental map especially our india map okay uh, daily okay it will just take one minute not one minute 30 to 40 seconds of your time to draw okay because in that uh, situation while you are dry, writing an answer for a 10 mark uh, that is 150 words not exceeding 150 words means seven minutes you will be taking seven to ten minutes only you will be taking okay uh, minimum seven minutes should be taken to complete that answer so within the seven minutes you have to consolidate all the points as well as you have to draw the map to know so that's why please have the practice of drawing map so here i have given the definition for tropical cyclones we know tropical cyclones uh, that is it is a low pressure area and we can say they are present near the equator so they have a good impact of coriolis force they will bring rainfall in those regions as well as they will be having rotating winds okay so that's why cyclones will cause uh, devastating effects in those regions okay always in india in the southern part of uh, uh, india we will be having the uh, nuances and devastating effects of flood like uh, we can say uh, cyclone gaja okay like these and all so 
first part of the question is about describing uh, about the tropical cyclones and conditions of tropical cyclone so please do remember the conditions and all you have to memorize it it will also help you in prelims okay so large sea surface temperature should be more than uh, 27 degree or 25 degree okay in some books they will be giving more than 25 degree in some books they will be giving more than 27 degree so 27 25 to 27 degree you can write okay so coriolis force sports has a very good impact and vertical wind speed will be there and also we can say uh there will be already because after the summer season only um the what we can say the monsoon season will start okay the tropical cyclones because after uh, during the summer season we will be having uh, uh, more operation and condensation process will be done so low pressure area will be created in the subsequent month we can say the monsoon season will be starting in india from june no okay so so we can say the low level uh, circulation cyclonic circulation will be uh, existing it will be a pre existing cyclonic storm will be there uh, during the end of the summer season we can say so now you have to cover the, that is about the first part of the question where you have to define about tropical cyclones and the conditions for tropical cyclones okay the second part of the question should be what are all the factors determining why the tropical cyclones are present uh, more often in gulf of mexico you can see gulf of mexico near north america and way of bengal near india and the south asian southeast asian countries and south china sea especially so why it is happening uh, what are all the factors helping them means you have to give it in one by one points okay this is what the whole holistic question holistic coverage of the uh, question should be there the focus of the question is about why the uh, tropical cyclones are more often in South China Sea, Bay of Bengal and Gulf of Mexico. So the locus of the question is about what is tropical cyclones, what are the conditions for tropical cyclone. Okay, you can even draw this uh, uh, map, no map sketch here itself. After the conditions of tropical cyclone, you can draw the sketch and you can proceed to the answer in the second uh, page. Okay, so we can say first one is about location. So they are located uh, between 8 degree to 30 degree. Especially they are talking about Bay of Bengal, uh, Gulf of Mexico and South China Sea. That's why we can say they are lying between 8 degree and 30 degree north of the equator. Uh, usually the tropical cyclones will be happening between uh, 10 degree to 30 degree north and south of the equator. As the focus of the question is about South China Sea, Bay of Bengal and Gulf of Mexico, we can say that they lie between 8 degree and 30 degree north of the equator. And the sea surface temperature is more than 25 degree and good impact of coronal force was there. And especially we can say they are free from the cold currents. There is no impact of the cold currents. Okay. Like Alaska current. Okay. Gulf Stream. We can say there is no uh, impact of the cold currents. They are free from cold currents. That's why the moisture ladder is the warm currents which are coming from the uh, coming from the land towards the uh, water body areas, tropical oceans and seas while crossing Gulf of Mexico or we can say Bay of Bengal or South China Sea, they will carry the moistures. So the moisture laden winds will uh, give rainfall to the impact windward side of the regions. Okay. So they are free from the cold currents. So we can say already after the summer season only monsoon season will be starting. So already the pre-existing cyclonic storm circulation will be there. That means what? The condition is suitable for a low pressure region that's all okay pre-existing low pressure uh, region has been formed okay and we can say local winds impact too okay hot low winds okay in the, along the china okay like we can say the local winds have the have their own impact for example we can say the tropical easterly jet stream on indian continent okay after the wind western disturbances we will be having our uh, first monsoon no so local winds also contribute a lot to the tropical cyclones near these regions especially gulf of mexico as the focus of the question is on gulf of mexico south china sea and the bay of bengal and also itc is that intertropical convergence zone there are all these regions we can say a degree to 30 degree north the itc is a zone is also located between these latitudes and this create already itc is its zone is always prone for the low pressure extreme low pressure area and because of that they provide the rotating winds okay so like they may cause uh, storms in the nearby areas okay 
so high amount of tropical water so the ample tropical water for example ample tropical water means bay of bengal south china sea and the uh, gulf of mexico okay there are only the tropical water because uh, warm currents will carry the moisture from them no and they will cause rainfall in the nearby regions so this is what the focus of the question has been uh, covered here so this is the complete coverage of this question only two parts in this question this is a very very direct question don't miss don't miss these questions and all but while they are asking you a direct question your answer may be seem simple to your mind but you have to uh, specifically answer the each and every word of the question here so you can see the focus is on tropical cyclone around the gulf of mexico bay of bengal and uh, south china sea but in the introduction you have to give about the definition of tropical cyclone and conditions for tropical cyclone as well as you have to give a sketch map of the uh, regions mentioned in the question and after that only you have to start proceeding the second part of the question or we can say the focus of the question why tropical cyclones are more often in uh, gulf of mexico bay of bengal and south china sea so at last the conclusion should be uh, very practical because uh, due to tropical cyclones will cause heavy rainfall and that will increase our groundwater table and we can say our water bodies uh, will have their retaining capacity during that time but it will be helpful for us uh, uh, for the irrigating our uh, irrigating our lands and other uh, social activities we can say um, okay consumption will be good during the summer season on dollar but they will cause uh, devastating effects like uh, cyclone fanny okay so they will cause devastating effects on the uh, region urban as well as the rural regions so during the time on dollar floods uh, during floods time on dollar we can see that in odisha uh, or we can say in our uh, uh, kerala or uh, nearby tamil nadu we can say uh devastating effects will be seen there okay the in rural areas as well as in the urban areas urban areas will be having their own impact on electrical transmission lines will be cut off in the rural areas uh, the agricultural crops will be get affected okay so uh, during that time the national disaster management authority will get into the field and they will uh, help the people know so we can say um we have to give we have to take mitigation measures for disaster management okay that we will see in the next uh, what we can say next to plan whenever the disaster management uh, plan is coming we can see about that holistically so here the conclusion should be so practical okay that's all so this is what the first question demands do you get satisfied with the answer yes ma'am yes ma'am okay priya shall we okay priya shall we move on to the next question okay ma'am the next question is also a very direct question but do you have to link the fold mountains with that of earthquake and volcanoes that is what uh, where you may may make mistakes okay while linking fold mountains and earthquake and volcanoes so this question is uh, based on uh, geomorphology okay sorry okay the question is about why are the world's fold mountain systems are located along the margins of the continents either western margin or eastern margin it doesn't matter okay why the world's fold mountains fold mountains we can say in our country himalayas is the youngest fold mountain no okay which was a recently formed one so why the world's fold mountain systems are located along the margins of the continent this is the first part of the question second part of the question you can see bring out the association between the global distribution of fold mountains and the earthquakes and volcanoes so here you have to answer the question in three parts the first one is about what is fold mountains and why they are located along the margins of the continents the second part is about um, that is the same as association between the global distribution of fold mountains okay that will you will be answering the first part itself second part itself so the third part is about you should link the fold mountains with that of earthquake and volcano phenomena okay so this is the demand of the question so here you can say it is a plate tectonics uh, question plate tectonics based question 
it is a purely a geomorphology question so you should start obviously you have to start the question with a theory of plate tectonics only so here uh, for for the formation of the fold mountain systems or earthquakes or the volcanoes we can say theory of plate tectonics is the dominant factor they play the theory plays a major role here for the fold mountains volcanoes and the earthquakes okay so we can say uh, how the fold mountains are formed how the fold mountains are formed means they are formed by the uh, plate boundaries either convergence or divergence or transform we can say especially fold mountains are formed by the convergent plate boundary system between continent to continental or uh, ocean continental plates okay uh, the lighter uh, what we can say the heavier uh, density material will be getting beneath the lighter material one okay that's that is how the zone of subduction will be formed and you will be getting uh, on the land fold mountains on the ocean if an ocean and the continental plate uh, converge each other okay they go on convergent plate boundaries means uh, you can see the ridges like island will be formed okay so they especially we can say this is the process so i have given so the first part of the question is about what is fold mountains i have given clearly here after that you have the so first part of the first part of the question itself they have asked so why they are located along the margins of the continents so now we have to give a map representation map sketch here okay see here the map sketch so here i have shown the dotted lines line dotted lines no like a millipede it is seen no so they are nothing but the plate boundaries okay plate boundaries ocean as well as continental so while drawing this question while drawing this uh, map sketch rough sketch of the world map you have to give a um what we can say title to like world map showing plate boundaries that's all so because they have given you, you know the question is about why they are located along the margins of the continents so we can see here in the north america south america in india and um, uh, near um, what we can say uh, europe and africa we can see the um, plate boundaries location and i have given certain examples too i have mentioned the fold mountains examples too see here in in india i have shown or else you can say then the south asia i have given himalayas and the eurasian uh, himalayas and near the europe appalachian mountains and you can also add alps mountains too in that tali region okay and um, here you can see in the south america and as mountain so these are all located along the margin of the continents so we are showing here due to the convergent or divergent or transform plate boundaries these fold mountains have been formed especially the plate fold mountains will be formed due to the convergent plate boundaries either continental continental or continental ocean plate while they are converging each other okay zone of subduction will be formed so the first part of the question has been answered here okay so now we have to give the um, the global distribution also i have covered here in the sketch itself okay also i will be uh, the in the second part of the question we have to give how the uh, fold mountains are getting formed okay and we have to state some examples for the plate boundaries too okay so this is the demand of the question first you have to explain about fold mountains and you have to show a sketch okay and next you have to say what is the general procedure for the formation of fold mountains like interaction of the plate boundaries that's all okay and next part of the question you should locate the plate boundaries in a world map a rough sketch should be drawn and you have to give some title and after that you have to show the process of the fold mountains because they have asked you the global distribution of the fold mountains the continental countries of the of here ocean is 
he so that's why i have uh, written like this okay also you can have their or uh, have you uh, artistic way in drawing this okay so see here continent ocean ocean continental plate ocean and uh, continental plate are getting converged and continental and continental plate are getting converged you can say the lighter material um, the heavier material heavier density material will be getting uh, sub subsidized down and the lighter material will come at the uh, they will be superseding the uh, heavier material one okay the heavier density will be getting down getting to the bottom and the uh, material will be on the top we can say okay because the weighted material will be you could know the same phenomena only uh, also happens here so while the convergence of continental plate happens uh, here you can see the subduction zone i have drawn it uh, like a slope no okay subduction zone is formed through that the molten magma molten rock will come to the top and they will form the fold mountains on the terrestrial region and if an ocean and the continental plate get uh, converged means they will form ridges or islands in the oceanic plate that's all okay so for example i have given for the continental continental plate himalayas are formed due to the convergence of eurasian indo australian and as well as the uh, nas and as also i have given uh, for uh, we can say a minor plate and a major plate is getting collided here nazca plate is a minor plate and south american plate is a uh, major plate i have also shown the nazca plate in the rough sketch too while we are giving some examples that should be indicated in a rough sketch so that will add meaningful to the sketch okay everyone will draw the map but what the uh, what it contains only matters okay so now we are covering the last part of the question that is about um, earthquakes and volcanoes which are the adjoining uh, activities along with the fold mountains so due to the fold mountains creation we can see some fissures or cracks will be there through them uh, fissions fissions and cracks will be there no through them a uh, molten magma will be getting erupted so that is what a volcanic eruptions will be there for earthquakes we can say while the plate movements are there we will be having seismic waves okay so that will ultimately cause the uh, seismic movement earthquakes will be there so at last coming to the conclusive conclusion okay holistic conclusion we can say in the holistic conclusion you have to give about the, the reality of the fold mountains because fold mind uh, for through the fold mountains we can study about the interior of the earth okay and also it creates a dynamic uh, dynamicness in the geomorphology and the geomorphology of the earth okay whenever a plate boundary uh, get converged we can say it form it forms a new um, what we can say a geological uh, or topography on the earth okay and as well as we can say uh, due to the formation of the fold mountains more often earthquakes only will happen because direct collision of plate will be there no uh, volcano or er, volcanic eruption are very less when compared to the earthquake uh, frequency okay here in this question i have covered everything you can see the focus of the question is on why it is uh, formed along the margins and the earthquakes and volcanoes so for the locus of the question we have given the formation what is fold mountains and how the fold mountains are formed okay and we have come to the focus on why they are present on the margin of the continents and the global distribution of the fold mountains and subsequently are also discussed here this is the structure of an answer should this is what the question demands okay that's all still anyone is having doubt in this question priya do you have any doubt in this question okay oh no ma'am okay priya we will move on to the next one add on okay 
So the add on this is a very uh, happiest question we can say because recently World Happiness Report has been released by United Nations Sustainable Development uh, Solutions Network. No, so that is why I have given this question to happiness. So this question is based on your perspective only. What is your pers perspective on happiness? Okay, because this question itself uh, demands your perspective only. Your opinion only. Okay. So this is my perspective. So I will just give a structure how to write. Okay. This is my perspective of about happiness. So you can see I will just give you an idea how to approach this question. Because this is wholly based on your personality. Okay. So the question is about all human beings aspire for happiness. Yeah, ultimately, uh, we are aspiring for happiness in each and every moment, you know. Okay. So, um, while uh, while achieving our uh, dreams or, or while we can say we are achieving our small dreams or while buying a new dress or while we are going for a walk in a park. So, everything which gives us a state of smile, you no, know, that is the happiness, you no. Know? Okay. So, do you agree? What does happiness mean to you? Explain with the examples. So, three part of the question. Whether we are uh, agreeing with agreeing that all human beings aspire for happiness. Ultimately, we can say all human beings aspire for happiness only in one way or the other. Okay. So we can say, uh, for example, a beggar is not having happiness. He will be having happiness. Okay. When he has uh, just uh, one, one time of food in a day. Okay. He will have the happiness. No, he or she will be the happiness. No. And we can say the multimillionaire. Uh, like um, Adani or Ambani in our country, we can say they also aspire for happiness. Okay. While they are being with their uh, family or while they are achieving the target in their business. Okay. Everyone aspire for happiness only. Okay. Right from the multimillionaire or we can say the economically, uh, the so called uh, below poverty line people too. Okay. Everyone aspire for happiness according to their view. Okay, I will agree with this. All the human beings aspire for happiness, but in this question, you should not explicitly write that as you are as in your high school. I guess I agree. All human beings aspire for happiness. You should not write like that. Okay, in the way of introduction itself, how you are approaching the answer itself will should show whether you are agreeing or disagreeing with the quotation. Okay, this is what a bureaucrat should write in the diplomatic way. Okay, and the second part of the question is what does happiness mean to you? You have to give your own definition of happiness here, and, and they are asking you to explain with some examples. You can give any uh, experience from yours, okay, even personal experience too. Okay, so I have given the definition for happiness here. You can see it is just a state of mind which is emotionally attained because it is an emotion. No, happiness is an emotion uh, which can be seen through our eyes, which can be seen through our uh, lips. Okay, so in the, through our face itself will show our happiness. Okay, when we uh, see our uh, love, what we can say, when we see our lovely things. Okay, so happiness is the state of the mind which is emotionally attained through satisfaction. Only when it gives satisfaction, we will have the happiness. No, for example, if you are having a plan today as per the civil service aspirant and you are completing it, okay, are almost. Uh, whether completing it 100% or yeah, just you are completing it to a 60 to 70 percent itself will give you a satisfaction of yes I have reached something better than yesterday you know so that is the state of mind you know which is emotionally attained through satisfaction and integrity and attitude every uh, happiness lies on the attitude only how we see okay and integrity is nothing but uh, how we share our happiness with others too okay uh, whether it is affecting others or not Okay, my view is about integrity. It will uh, give pleasant experience to everyone, not only to me, like that. Okay, so it will not affect anyone's liberty or freedom. Okay, so happy I have given my own perspective of the definition there. And we can say every human being have their attain happiness in each and every moment of their life. Okay, that is how the hope only, the happiness only drives our life, no? Every day will not be the same day, but... Uh, in a day, we will have some asserting less than 1%. Uh, um, some things will give us uh, happiness, no? even though in a very bored day. Okay. 
so i have given here two extreme personalities uh, how they determine their happiness so we, i i will be taking uh, mahatma gandhi because mahatma gandhi can be uh, given a very great example for everything when comes to ethical point of view it's my opinion it's my true opinion okay we can uh, merge him with the we can link him with the uh, ethical values or moral values uh, like empathy uh, like we can say integrity and uh, what we can say um attitude okay tolerance for all these values uh, in ethics uh, we can compare mahatma gandhi ji okay he lived through it so i have given two uh, two extreme personalities like mahatma gandhi who uh, who attained happiness um, while achieving independence through satyagraha and ahimsa and mother teresa do she her happiness is defined by her um, charity work her altruistic behavior okay she always love and uh, she always uh, uh have a very pure heart uh, she always have to she always try towards a love and uh, what we can say peace so on the other hand adolf hitler mussolini also have their own way of happiness towards their authoritarian authoritarian uh, uh, work authoritarian deeds and um, while doing genocide of the jews adolf hitler attained happiness now we can say it's his uh, perspective of happiness that's all but my definition of happiness in the introduction is about doing good do i integrity the word integrity itself tells that um, it will not affect others liberty or freedom okay so while writing these type of question you should give the um, two types of personalities here okay it's my view of answering this question okay you can also use this okay because ethics is all about your personality is getting checked up so this is you you should think the question in many ways okay so please keep practicing ethics question okay there is no standard for the ethics question uh, this is how you should write here as like the gs question because if you see the gs question first one tropical cyclones they have asked so on the focus of the question is on gulf of mexico south china sea bay of bengal so focus of the question has given local should be on the tropical cyclone but you are you should not deviate from your topic there no but in this question you can have the uh, focus happiness and you can compare it with in all dimensions with the positive dimension and negative dimension too so that's what um, i have written here okay so because ethics question doesn't have a uh, definite or we can say this is how it should be this is how the universally accepted and all uh, structure is not there it is your own perspective so and what does happiness means to you they have asked here no so just to give the definition of your opinion and they explain some examples they have given so i have given my example here my own life example while going through the process of uh, achieving my dream as a civil service aspirant okay you can even add your uh, examples too so what i have written means um, even though i get failures okay or get getting uh, even though i get failures or i can say i am not getting uh, um, while i am getting success too i will always have the satisfaction of going uh, doing a step ahead uh, doing something which was better than the previous one that satisfaction gives me the happiness okay and learning from the mistakes will try to rectify that error and i will ultimately get the happiness in that so and i have given some uh, uh, given the a uh, journey to here because while the civil service per, uh, preparation itself gives me uh, the attitude of seeing positive in everything and uh, it paves way for other values like empathy tolerance uh, integrity attitude and compassion okay so i have given my example you can write any example okay i am i have just given my own experience while preparing for the civil service examination okay so ultimately the conclusion should be a very holistic one like we can say we can add a report or we can add any quotation okay so i have given the report here so the recent world happiness report have been given released you know by the united nations sustainable solutions network how can we attain happiness in a nation or in the world through reducing inequalities only you know while achieving the sustainable development goal 10 we can um increase or we can um, broaden the happiness to everyone no so as a bureaucrat i have written the 
as a what we can say from a bureaucratic perspective you should you should write the conclusion here okay this is the, the demand of the question is about whether you are agreeing with the quotation and they are asking you to give your perspective on on happiness and they are asking you to illustrate with some examples too so that is your own part of the question and the conclusion should be like um it can be other way also just uh, with the conclusion in ethical sense also you can write okay so where uh, rather than writing this conclusion you can also replace it with the other conclusion like uh, we can say uh, the happiness is the ultimate goal of all the human beings or all the individuals we can say and uh, while an individual has attained happiness a uh, society if, um, a society will get at, will attain the happiness when a society attains happiness the whole country will attain happiness through its performance when a country gets attainness it will share its happiness to all other countries ultimately um what we can say substantial happiness can be achieved like this also we can replace this conclusion okay that's all we have covered all the questions here so i will upload the answers in our group 2 okay ma'am okay please keep practicing the questions okay priya please keep practicing questions then only you will have the uh, practice of writing and you can improve your answers too okay so yes we will wind up the session now tomorrow we will meet again in day 15 plan okay thank okay. you all thank you ma'am thank good you night. priya good night sweet dreams okay thank you